Welcome back. Well, as you saw in British Columbia, PEI's government has also been flush with cash for a decade, mainly from new immigrants from China. But it's how that money was spent that's the issue. There is no money trail to follow. Whistleblowers say they saw what was happening on the inside, and they say it involves millions in political favors. This is where I come when I'm injured to get strong again. Susan Holmes never planned to be a whistleblower, but what she and two other former bureaucrats allege was going on has become PEI's longest running scandal and only the whistleblowers have paid a price. You've been radioactive in this province for a long time, at least for some of the people. Yes. Yeah. You were trolled pretty hard. Oh, terribly hard. It all began with good intention as a way for Prince Edward Island to reverse generations of population loss. But it ended up putting a price on easy Canadian residency. It was among the most generous immigration programs in Canada to entice new arrivals from far, far away. And it succeeded. A decade of immigration, mostly from mainland China, has made the island of Anne of Green Gables much more multicultural and much wealthier. It is now the fastest growing province in the country. Many of the new arrivals paying a deposit of $150,000 to start a new business in exchange for residency in Canada and maybe learning a little curling along the way. Some, like photographer He Key, set up businesses PEI made so attractive with its provincial nominee program, or PNP. Here are some of my products. He left behind a career in Beijing working for tech giants like Nokia and Blackberry. Well, this is a life change for myself and my family. My wife and my daughter like this island very much, just like me. His imagery of PEI represents island tourism today, and he's published a book of PNP families like his settling well into their new home. It is a very peaceful life, very quiet life here, and I think this program also makes some dreams come true. But right across from his business is another that is rarely open. A few pieces of fine china on a table provide the appearance of a store, but without a way to reach the owners, if they're even still in PEI. The PEI government admits that nearly two-thirds of new businesses promised in 2016 and 2017 never opened. PEI processed the applications faster than most provinces and gave permanent residency as soon as they landed here in Charlottetown. Most other provinces only offered work permits. But the new arrivals had to establish a business for one year. If they didn't, they'd forfeit their down payment, but not their residency. For the mostly affluent Chinese, $150,000 was a small price to pay to be able to live anywhere in Canada. And there were other expenses newcomers had to pay. Tens of thousands of dollars in fees for lawyers, accountants, immigration agents. They were also required to pass an English test with among the lowest standard of proficiency in the country. I had heard from many people and started to become aware of a lot of discrepancies in the provincial nominee program. Susan Holmes alleges that she and a committee of experts were ordered to give half of a $4 million English language training contract to someone with friends in high places. He knew all the deputy ministers and he knew, um, well, a great number of them. So do you think it was a political decision? I think it was a, a political decision, yes. After you were told that the contract was going to go to um, someone with political connections, as well as who you recommended, mm -hmm. were you asked to endorse that decision? Yes. I said I wouldn't. <laughs> I didn't want to be touched by it. So when you stood up to the boss 
Were there repercussions then? Yes. What happened? Um, the term gaslighting comes to mind. People started not to look at you because they knew you were a dead man walking. Her contract was not renewed. Then, during the Liberal re-election campaign in 2011, Susan and two other former senior bureaucrats went public with allegations of PNP corruption to the Globe and Mail. The Liberal Party then provided leaked copies of their personnel records to the media, calling them partisan, which six years later, the province's privacy commissioner ruled was a breach of their privacy rights by either their former department, the premier's office, or cabinet office. It was like a feeding trough, and only certain people were invited to the trough. Cora Plourd was one of the other whistleblowers appointed by the previous PC government to develop the admission standards for the PNP, but says she saw things change when the Liberals came to power. What did you see happening to the criteria over time? Disintegrating. There was basically no tracking, no follow-up. Um, it was some of the suggestions that I had made that we needed maybe a person to look at some of this stuff to see that things were being met. But it, it didn't happen. Yeah, so it became a free-for-all. It did. Especially during the last six months of 2008, before Ottawa pressured PEI to slow down, 1,877 new businesses were registered, double the number from the entire year before. Wealthy new arrivals could also opt to invest $200,000 into existing PEI businesses. Almost 1,400 companies benefited from that. From 2008 to 2018, money from PNP applicants who never set up businesses also added $120 million in penalties to PEI's treasury. All of that is a lot of new money in PEI. When you remember that the entire province's population is barely over 150,000 people. They had the money. It that's was, all they had. He had a pulse and he had money. I think that's all that they needed. When you think Cora claims she was pressured to approve some applications. And I was called in and to, uh, to change uh, my decision, and I would write approved under duress on mine. Did your supervisor say why they he were going to overrule you? He said he had a call from the fifth floor. And the fifth floor was Premier Giz's floor. Like Susan, Cora's contract was never renewed. Who in PEI was getting how much PNP money has never been revealed to the public. In 2012, the PEI Supreme Court ordered the release of a secret list of businesses that had been granted PNP units of money, but the court did not require the public release of the dollar amounts. But Cora says she saw dollar. some of those dollar figures before she was let go. So she started building her own database from the list alleging huge sums of money seeded PEI businesses. I wanted to know who got all of this money. In fact, in the only independent assessment of the program, PEI's Auditor General found several high-ranking bureaucrats received PNP funding. We identified three Deputy Minister-level employees and other spouses who received units under the program while they were in their positions including the deputy minister in charge of PNP and his wife, PEI's leader of the opposition at the time. So Brooke McMillan, the innovation minister, broke all the rules. That 1.2 million that we're talking about, is he going to pay all the fees and return all the fees for the intermediators, the agents, the lawyers, the accountants that worked on that file? Then Premier Robert Giz ordered the money returned. But Cora alleges there were many other firms with connections to the government who got very rich with the PNP. It's greed. It was pure greed. And the ones that were connected, there were connected families and friends that were getting multiple units and take out another numbered company or name little another company within their company and get more units. There was so much new immigrant money washing over PEI before 2008, they were giving it away to businesses big and small, like Orchard View Cottages. The island rentals have been in Ronald Toombs' family for decades. This guy came along in 2008 with uh, 
PMP stuff, and I was head over heels in, in debt here, and it was a big lift for me. To get as much as $200,000, Ronald was required to add an investor to his business as manager, but... I never seen them. Ron doesn't know if the Chinese investor even lives in PEI anymore. Robert Giz's liberal government inherited the PNP from the previous PC government when he came to power in 2007. I'm used to the cold in Ottawa, and, but I'm from Prince Edward Island. So he left as premier in 2015 and now lobbies on behalf of telecommunications companies. He would not agree to an interview with W5, but through his lawyer stated the allegations about PNP interference are based on false information from sources with axes to grind against our client. Any reliance on these sources would be a grave mistake by W5. When we attended a public appearance, he is also denied any role in determining who received PNP funds. No, but as you know, there's been a lot of allegations that have never really been addressed that lots of friends of the government were the ones that benefited from that program. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, not true, but uh, you know, everything's public documents and you can see them for everything was released. Did you or anyone in your office ever direct where that money would go? No. Never did? No. Thanks. For Susan Holmes and Cora Plourd, life as whistleblowers has been harsh. Susan had to sell much of her family property on PEI to financially survive. I never dreamed that I would be persecuted to this level. So I had to go all across Canada and take uh, jobs that were short term. And so I've done a lot of moving in the last number of years. Um, this is hard for me. My husband was very ill, and I was under a lot of stress for that. And trying to look after him, trying to be strong, trying to keep my stress from this, and he died the next November. And that year, so much of our time was under the stress. I feel I didn't give him the best, the best I could. But Cora and Susan are no longer struggling alone. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Together with a third colleague, Svetlana Tonetko, who is very ill, they've decided to come together in a lawsuit, alleging their reputations never recovered from going public with their allegations. In the fall of 2018, the current PEI government tightened the PNP stream further, making it harder to obtain Canadian residency, hoping to put all the controversy behind it. It will not be as easy for Cora and Susan to move on. I'm finding it really hard to come back this was once Susan's dream retirement home. She designed it, chose every detail, but after blowing the whistle, couldn't afford to keep it. This was where I was supposed to Retire. be and end up. The, the whole end of my working life was everything I dreamed of. It's not easy, but I would, I would never take it back. I would do it all over again because I have to, I'd have to tell the truth. I, yeah, I just, me too. I couldn't sleep at nights knowing that it's just not going right. on. It's not right. No. It's not right. It's not right for every Islander. It's just not right.